Good morning, lovely people. How are you all today? Are you bathed in the same glorious sunshine that I am? It's beautiful. I feel like it's summer all over again. It's just gorgeous. What a contrast. A couple of days ago, I was down here. Grey, drizzle, chilly. It was perfect weather for digging. I've got a bit more digging to do today and I think I'm going to be sweating. Actually, which is a reminder, where have I put it? Don't forget to keep drinking your water. Because mm. it really is quite warm and if you're exerting yourself, like I will be later, like I was the other day, oh, sweating. So don't forget to top off on your water. Ah, someone was asking me about this bottle the other day. This is a little glass bottle in a sort of neoprene sleeve which just stops it getting banged um i don't want to be buying bottled water and putting all that plastic out into the universe i do have a couple of plastic bottles here which are ancient and i just use them for fetching water to and from um this one i think it was about 10 pounds seems like a lot of money doesn't it i got it online i can't remember the maker but if you go online and search um, glass water bottles. There's loads out there. Let's have another slurp. Mm. So it's absolutely gorgeous today. And in fact, it's the perfect day for dealing with the squash harvest, which you will have seen me harvesting, was it about a week ago or so? Um, just before I get on to sort of cleaning them and storing them, because essentially this is about storing them today. With a lot of us, <coughs> excuse me, have been speculating about why things weren't so good this year. And obviously one of the, the things we hopefully do as gardeners is we use our experiences to inform us to maybe do things differently next year. Some things are out of our control. Sometimes it's a bad year purely because of the weather. Not much you can do about that. Um, but let's address some of these points that have come up, some which I knew anyway, some which were news to me. So I just thought I'd kind of recap what folk have been saying and the things I know as well and then hopefully next year we'll all have a bumper harvest. So first things first, male flowers, female flowers. So in the squash family, they're very clever, super duper clever. They put out their male flowers first. Now, I don't want to be anthropomorphic about this, but they're putting up their male flowers to basically test the environment. They're checking to see if there are pollinators about. So usually a plant will put out five, six, seven, even more male flowers before a female flower is produced. Once that female flower is produced, what you have to hope for is that you've still got male flowers on the go. So that as the bees are flitting backwards and forwards, you get the drift. So with mine this year, um, I did have the usual lots and lots of male flowers. Um, and the female flowers seem to be really, really late coming. So I'm a bit... I'm not quite sure why the male flowers didn't sense the pollinators. I have so many bees on my plot. It, literally, all through the summer, whatever I'm doing, wherever I am, I can hear that constant buzz of the bees and it's wonderful. And I plant all these flowers I plant, I plant specifically to, well not specifically, but largely to attract the bees in. So I'm thinking, were the bees too busy in the cosmos that they didn't notice the pumpkin flowers? I have no idea, but something I might try next year is as soon as I start to see male flowers is to just go in there with my little paintbrush and give them a tickle and hopefully trick them into thinking that I'm a pollinator and hopefully they'll think, oh, I'm getting a tickle, <laughs> let's put out a female flower. I don't know, it's worth a go. And then the other thing is, as soon as next year, as soon as I see any female flowers, I will hand pollinate. So I will go and find a male flower, tickle with my paintbrush, and then go and tickle the female flower. You can actually take the male flower off and put it into the female flower, 
but if I've only got a couple of male flowers at that stage, I don't want to be taking them off, and then they'll die. I want to keep that male flower going in order to, like I say, hand pollinate. So maybe that will help. I think another thing that didn't help us this year was that March, April, May were bone dry. Absolutely bone dry. No rain for three months. I've never known anything like it in this country. It was really, really odd. I mean, there's a couple of weeks went by. I was so this is this is odd for this time of year. But then when it got to five, six, seven weeks without rain, it was really quite a cause for concern because is this how our weather is going to be from now on? Do we have to change our thinking about what we grow? <sighs> anyway, the long and the short is, so March, April, May were really dry. June and July were hot, really hot, but still only sprinklings of showers. So maybe they were just too dry. Maybe the conditions were just too dry for them. Maybe I should have watered them some more. I was watering them, but maybe they just needed more. Uh, mentioned previously that I think I've got too many in too small a space, so they were fighting for nutrients. So this is another thing for next year. I will space them out more and give them way more muck in their hole when I plant them. Um, <clears throat> So hopefully that will help. Someone else suggested that it could have been too much nitrogen in the soil. Um, now I do use my own urine for fertilising and it's higher in nitrogen than the other minerals that the plants want. But I just can't see that I would have had that much of a nitrogen build up in that bed because the previous year it was onions followed by brassicas which I don't tend to give much of a fertilise with my urine so I don't think it was too much nitrogen who knows so yeah there's a few things to think about for next year mainly more spacing more muck in the hole and definitely keeping a really close eye on the flowers Tickling the males as soon as they appear. <laughs> that sounds really wrong. <laughs> um, and then as soon as I see any female flowers, do some hand pollinating. I thought the bees were busy doing it for me, but um, I think they were too busy in the cosmos. Anyway, so the harvest is in. A little bit earlier than I would have hoped. So for instance, on this lovely butternut, you can see there's still, I don't know if you will be able to pick it up, but there's ever so faintly, there are still green stripes in it. Normally I'd want to harvest after those green stripes have disappeared and it's completely pink, beige, nude, whatever colour you call that. So for storage, what I would normally do is clean them and then quite simply I put them in a cool, airy place and just leave them completely alone. That's it. I don't do anything with them and it's one of the reasons I love to grow squash is because I don't have to I don't have to process them it's not like when I get my tomato harvest and I spend hours and hours bottling they're dead easy to just pick get home we're pretty much done also I'm not relying on electricity to store them so I'm not storing them in a freezer I'll come onto the freezer in a second so if you were I don't know, living halfway up a mountain in a little cabin. I'm jealous. <laughs> but if you're if you're generating your own electricity through solar or wind, and it's a really precious resource that you don't necessarily want to be using to store your food, squash is great. But also grow squash because it's such a versatile veg. Everything from sweet to savoury, everything from blended and pureed right down to gorgeous chewy chunks. It's fantastic. I'm starting to um, think about food now and digress. So for cleaning, all I'm going to do is I've got my tea tree oil, I've got my bowl of water, just four or five drops, and it's just to give the surface a little bit of a clean so that any of the, the sort of um, nasty little microbes just give it a clean. Look, I know there's 
stuff in the air. But I give them a clean before I store them and hopefully that will make them last a bit longer. Actually, for cleaning them, um, if you would have seen my video a couple of days ago on rosemary, you could also do this with rosemary. If you grab yourself a big bunch of rosemary, a really, you know, chunky handful, a few hundred mils of water, four or five hundred mils of water, boil the kettle, as it were, make a cup of rosemary tea, sort of, let it steep for 10 minutes, strain it off and use that water to wash your squash with because it's antimicrobial. Yay! So quite simple and it's perfect day to do it today actually because it's sunny and warm so they'll all have a wash <laughs> and then they can uh, dry in the sun. How wonderful! Really, really quite muddy this one. It's one of those chores to just get lost in. Oh, it's great. Especially when there are friends around on the allotment. It's one of those chores, sit at the table, do it, have a cup of tea, natter. Perfect. Now I was saying about storing them whole and not requiring any electricity. Yay! But of course the I'll come to it in a second, this beautiful Rouge Vif de Tomp, which I think is my absolute favourite this year. Look at it, it's the classic Cinderella pumpkin. I'm going to the ball! <laughs> it's huge. Now, I wouldn't normally want to grow such huge pumpkins just because of the storage thing, because once I cut into it, I'm going to have to use it. But I've so fallen in love with how this one looks that if it tastes good too, I'm definitely growing it again because also it's made other people smile who've seen it on my plot so I'm loving it. So in terms of freezing you can either basically just chop it up, get it out of its skin, get rid of the seeds and all the pulp, chunk it up and maybe it went, as you chunk it up measure it into the portion size that you would want for say making a soup or a pie whatever and literally just whack it into the freezer. I don't blanch it when I do that, I just put it straight in the freezer because I'll be using it within six months so I'm not worried about blanching. The other thing you can do is you can roast it first. Mm. So if you've got the oven on anyway, if you're making your Sunday roast, chunk up a load of the pumpkin, whack it on the bottom shelf, like I say because the oven's on anyway, and then once it's roasted, scoop out that gorgeous roast flesh and then freeze that. I tend to just freeze it when I have in the past, au naturel, uh, just because then it gives me the versatility later on to do what I want with it. So if I don't want that roasted pumpkin taste, it's not roasted. If I want it roasted, it comes out of the freezer and then I can roast it. So, I've got quite a few more to get through. This one's really grubby where it was sat on its side. So I'm going to enjoy this beautiful, actually the clouds have just come over, but it's still an absolutely gorgeous day. My neighbour Sheen has just arrived, so I think I'm going to go and uh, see if she fancies a cuppa, because I haven't seen her for a while. As I carry on washing all I think it's about 22, 23 pumpkins all together and squash. I hope you've had a great harvest. I hope you're enjoying stashing things away for the winter. Just remember, um, if you're going to leave it in your shed, you, you could store them in your shed, but you don't want them to be going below one or two degrees centigrade. So if it looks like you're going to have frost, 
bring them home and pop them maybe in your garage at home if you've got a garage that doesn't go below freezing or if you've got a cellar in your house wherever you can find space for them I, I wouldn't have them indoors where if you've got heating on a bit too warm but yeah somewhere like a porch actually that would be beautiful in the porch wouldn't it because then as anyone who comes to your house comes into your house they'll see all these gorgeous squash arranged everywhere so yeah have fun with your harvest have fun with storing and I don't know about you guys, but I can't wait for the depths of winter now so I can start knotting on all this stuff. So I say cheerio for now. Stay well guys, and I'll see you all again really soon, I hope. Take care.